Hi, I'm Erica Ramirez, founder of Illy and host of What About Your Friends, a podcast dedicated to the many lives of friendship and how it's portrayed in pop culture. Every Wednesday on the Ringer Dish feed, I talk to my best friend, Stephen Othello, and your favorites from within the Ringer and beyond about friendships on TV, in movies, pop culture, and our real lives. So join me every Wednesday on the Ringer Dish feed, where we try to answer the question TLC asked back in the day, what about your friends? This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other, well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliet Littman. It's hometowns week on The Bachelorette. We've been to four people's homes and we're going to break it all down. Obviously, we'll be also discussing Love Island UK. To do it, I've got the great Callie Curry with me. Hi, Callie. Hello. How are you? Um, I'm fine. <laughs> got a lot going on are over you sure? here. And <laughs> I think I've reached my like max number of moves in a year and I'm just I'm tapped out at the moment. It's also not even been a year for you. I'm just going to know it's been like <laughs> six weeks. Like you were pretty, yeah. you were just like in Brooklyn for a while. Now you're all over the map in, in central uh, Florida. Yeah. I was, I was thinking the other day though, mid September, maybe end of September, I'm going to feel really good. Moved in, finally settled, situated. I'll feel good. Great. I hope. Yeah. I hope so too. All right. We got to start with The Bachelorette. A lot happened this week. I was thinking about my biggest questions for you. And I'd like to begin with, did Charity make the right decision in keeping Joey and sending Aaron B back to Houston slash New Orleans? I mean, that's hard to answer, but I would say... That's why it's a discussion question. (laughs) (laughs) For me and my personal journey with Charity... Yes, I think she did make the right decision. For Charity herself, maybe not. I was kind of shocked. Were you? Because I thought the date with his family... Which one? With which with which guy? Aaron, sorry. We haven't been like, you know, Team Aaron over here. No, he's a little too like plain for me. Right, but I think Charity's kind of plain. I thought his family was like very sweet, kind. Yeah. Felt like Charity fit right on in there. I thought she really like it seems like she like really values like the family, the traditional family construct and all of that. To me, I was like, oh, she's like really into this. The only thing with if I was charity, I would be like, so you didn't love me before this date. And now you do. That was like a little like interesting. You some you don't think like seeing the fuller picture of him at home with his family could be like clarifying. You mean for him? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying with like that charities, like the way she changed how she was feeling. No, 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 no. She was oh. she still she like loved seeing him with this family and all that was great. Like it all went really well. I was saying Aaron before the date was like, I wish we had more time. I just can't say that I'm falling in love with you. And then two hours later, he's like, I want to let you know I'm falling in love with you. And I was just like, is that how it works? <laughs> he does kind of sound like that. Sort of like a weird. It's not really a monotone, but his his cadence is very specific. Like Mm -hmm. the way it's sort of, it is sort of like lyrical in a way. Like he could break out into like his spoken word piano playing at any time. I really liked Aaron's family's house. Sometimes when you see these hometowns, it doesn't really feel like they're anywhere specific. 
but it felt like a home that people really lived in. And also based on the meal that they served, like they were really trying to like create like a cozy, warm home environment. And it made me like Aaron's family a lot. I was actually another one of my questions for you that you can think about. We'll come back to you is which family would you want to join? Not did you like the most, but like did you feel like you'd want to be a part of? And it might be the same answer. But anyway, Aaron, I really liked Aaron's family's home and his his parents seemed like so lovely. I don't know. Yeah, it, it was a good it was a nice date. That's what I'm saying. If I was charity and I saw all four families, if it was a close battle between Aaron and anyone, um, I would feel really strong about Aaron's family. I just think that seeing someone's family, like, I don't know, when you get married to someone, like, you got to be around those people a lot. Right. A lot. And my friends who are in relationships or married to people who they don't like their family, it's not awesome. It's a huge strain on the relationship. Right. That sucks. I can tell I can just tell everyone Callie loves her family, in-laws and and um family of origin. I do. You talk about you really talk about them so sweetly. It's one of my favorite things about you. It's such a nice trait. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm really close <laughs> with both sides of our family. My family and my husband's family. And it's really nice. Yeah, it see it seems like it. I I I just think she might charity might be slightly attracted to the challenge because the fact that she kept both Joey and Xavier in the weeks in which there was like very clear red flags is like, hmm, okay, are you sure? Like, and maybe that's more of like, um, not that she likes the chaos or she likes the challenge, but like wants to kind of like figure out what's going on there. Because I kind of get that. Like for me, I'm very like, okay, this is a puzzle. I want to solve it. But I do think there's something about just like the simplicity of Aaron that probably there's not a lot of fire there. I agree with you. I just, yeah. And to your point, I, I completely agree with you. I think he could be a little boring, but I don't think that's bad when you're thinking long term. I yeah. actually think that's a that's a very good sign. Green flag for Aaron. And you said it made you, it. You me said too. that you liked Aaron's family a lot, but it made me like Aaron more because obviously we're only getting snippets of him. So to see his family and how they interact with each other. And even just like their home and feeling mm-hmm. like, like I felt like about, like Charity just felt immediately a part of their family. Like those are all good signs. I think it was helpful that his brother's girlfriend was there. So they were sort of like another outsider. Like I think it's good when there's like an in-law essentially. But even, yeah. And even the in-law, like the way that they were talking about her, like she seems totally comfortable and like woven into the family. I just think that seeing all those things when it's definitely not always the case and like, I don't know if people agree. With, I, th- I think this is like a thing, but like, like usually daughters and whoever they marry are more like intertwined in the family than sons and who they are married. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. So an even bigger green flag for me was like how comfortable the wife felt and how they were talking about her. I don't know. Aaron's family was, I was shocked at how like warm they were, were just because they seemed like a lot more fun than Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I also wonder if, like, obviously we're basing this all off of like a two minute clip. So, and also, yeah, we've gotten very little of all the guys. <laughs> yeah, but I would say that based on what we saw, like, it seems like Aaron came from like a very loving home and, you know, like they were raised with really good values and all that stuff. So I'm wondering, Juliet, as someone who came from a similar situation, mm-hmm. I would assume from what I know from what know about you. <laughs> You're also smart enough to know when you go on TV, you need to act right. Yes. So (laughs) I'm wondering if Aaron is so like formal. Like I feel like his vibe is just like a little formal, a little boring. Is also him being like, I got to make sure that I'm like, you know, representing representing my family well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a piece of it. Also at the end when she's crying and he doesn't, I thought it was kind of sweet that he was like, I'm just trying to hold it together. Like he very much didn't want to lose it on camera, but which I, I relate to, but I, I liked that he sort of like let her know that he was feeling something, even though he didn't want mm-hmm. to show it. I thought that was kind of nice, even if it's not true. I don't know. He's just, there's just not the spark there. I think it is true. I think he was really sad. I do too. Yeah, I think, I, I thought their football moment was cute. Although I have to say, this is like maybe more of a me problem, but when he held up the jacket that Charity then put on, it was so small that I thought it was like a joke, like for like, like very child. cheesy, like for our future child. It's bitter. <laughs> yeah. It, I was like, oh, that was for her. Fit her like a glove. It was 
tiny. That was the smallest leather ja- Letterman jacket I've ever seen. I absolutely love Letterman's jackets. Yeah, they're very... It's very cool. But I only like fake ones. Like, you don't want ones from, like, actual high school or, like, you want... You want, like, by, like, a brand. Like, you want, like, a cool like, streetwear brand. Like, my Letterman's jacket from high school. I'm pretty sure I had one in college, too. They just, like, they didn't fit, like, the ones that fit when you buy them from a place. Yeah, because they're not, like, fashion. They're, like, I'm a varsity right. athlete. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I'm a varsity athlete ones aren't for me. Also, I think those might fit men better than women. For sure. They're so, like, bulky. bulky. And the leather isn't, like, soft at all, obviously, because they're not... That seems hot. I mean, yeah. You can't wear them when it's... I'm always hot. So hot outside. Always worrying about sweating. <laughs> But I think they look cute when they're like, I don't know, bought from somewhere else. Like, um, I don't know. I also buy them for my daughter a lot whenever they have like little ones at Zara and she never... It's a cute, it's a cute look. She barely ever wears them now. I'm like forcing them on her because I think they're cute. Uh, I think it's a cute look too for little girls. I like it a lot. But yeah, Aaron, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm going to miss Aaron, but I do think it's kind of interesting that she chooses like the more challenging relationship, which leads us to Joey. What do you think his family was getting at? There was clearly some kind of like, there's something that was gone that was going unsaid that they were just speaking around when they were like, we're not sure you're getting the real Joey. And then is it him in the scenes from next week in the preview who's like, I'm a hard person to be in a relationship with? It seems like it. Yeah, I think I think that was him. Yeah, he's like, I'm a hard person to be with. I'm just like, what what were they not saying? That's my bit. That's actually my biggest question of the week. Well. I would say that the uncle was the most vocal Mm -hmm. with saying it. But then his mom was like, are you being yourself? Why does everyone think they're not? That he's himself? Like, what are... I know. Like, what is it? And which... I don't really know. I don't either. In in my side text with my friends, Rachel and Melanie Platten, who came on this pod a few weeks ago. And at the time, we were discussing if Joey was a fuckboy. And I feel like he's, he's presented himself very well the last few weeks. And now I feel like I'm like, oh, maybe he is actually a fuckboy and his family is like worried about how he's acting. But I don't know. I really don't know what they were trying to get at. But I I would like to know. I don't think that. It was just weird how his uncle was immediately like, oh, you're... Can you be a fuckboy in Hawaii? Definitely. Are you joking? With like people who just come for a week oh, and just want to like... Oh, I people that are like coming into town. Yeah. They're yeah. like, oh my God, I want to have an affair with my tennis pro. And I, he seems like he'd be down. Can you be a fuckboy in Hawaii? Are you joking? Have you ever seen Blue Crush? I have. Joey does not give me fuckboy vibes. But I hear what you're saying. The environment that he's in a day-to-day, it could be lead to that. But also, like, I've had a brother or brothers who have been fuckboys at one point in their lives or still are. Can't say that surprises me. I, when they bring a homegirl, I'm not like, are you being yourself? Like, no. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. Like, I would more so be like, I would tell the girl, like, just just take your time. Be careful. <laughs> would you do that? You know what I mean? No. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Uh, and, unless I, like, I don't know, if it was, like, a, if I really, really liked the girl, they were together for a long time, and it was just, like, a roller coaster, I'd probably just be like, hey, make sure you have something for yourself. You know what I mean? Like, make sure you're not pouring all your energy into him. Like, pour energy into yourself. You know, you never know. You're young. So things could happen. Right. Yeah, I think it's it's weird to like interfere. But I would not be like he's not being yourself because they are themselves. Usually fuckboys are just like lying. Yeah. You know or what like I, mean? how, I think of it as like having... I can't remember what podcast I was talking about this on. Maybe with Jody, But I was like, I think of it as someone who just has like a lot of girls like in the mix at one time and just doesn't really like take any of their feelings into account. But it's just sort of like right. having fun. Yeah. But they're themselves. Yes. That's their personality at the time. Hopefully, hopefully most fuckboys grow out of it. I think it's usually a phase. Uh, I would say it's probably like an 80-20. 80% grow out of it eventually. Right. Also, being a okay. fuckboy in your 20s to me is like, are you a fuckboy or are you just a 20-year-old? Right. Or are you just in your 20s? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree on that. But I thought it was just... Joey's uncle was like immediately like, are you, you don't seem like you're being yourself. Like there's something off. So I'm just like, I want to know who the real Joey is. Is he like, I was like, does he have anger issues? I was like, maybe is he, be, is he silly? Cause I will say I don't get like a lot of like levity from him and they don't, the, the, when she was like messing up on the tennis court, which was kind of cute. I thought that was like the most like laughter. It seems like they've had, I feel like they just have a lot of sexual chemistry maybe. And that's why 
It's persisted. Mm. But I don't really, I don't know. It was definitely a weird hometown. I, I liked that it was, he had so many people. Or like, maybe he's like OCD or something. <laughs> it's only two options. Either he has like mental health stuff or he's a fuck boy. There's nothing, no other option. <laughs> I don't really know what else it could be. It was, I don't either. That's why I want to know. But it was, it was it's like eerily like looming over. I know. I know. It was really weird. Why won't you guys just fucking tell us? Right. Like, I guess maybe he will next week when he's talking to her about Mm -hmm. being being a hard person to be in a relationship with. But him saying, like, I'm a hard person to be in a relationship with, then I'm like, what does that mean? If you're a fuck boy, you don't say that. Right. Well, hopefully we'll find out next week when they go to Fiji. I was was surprised she kept him because of his... The way that he told Jesse, like, I'm nervous because last time we saw each other... It didn't. It was like a bad ending. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And during it, like she was like, he said, she said it's happy tears, but it's not the vibe I was getting. No. Which I will say, I did like that he like even picked up on that because a lot of guys are just like, you know, don't even. They're like, yeah, that ended amazingly. Like he definitely was like reading the energy correctly. I get the impression that after his dad came out, he probably had a lot of therapy. Not about his dad coming out, but just about like everything like his family is going through. It seems like when your parents have like a big shift, like it probably impacts you. And so I think he seems more in tune with his like emotions and like emotional frequencies as a result of therapy. I think that maybe the whole mental health angle might be where this is going, especially if he was in therapy because, you know, most of us probably have issues that are never diagnosed or are ever talked about because we aren't in therapy, but because he was forced to therapy, they may have identified some things. And I, by the way, that's just my assumption, but I think it's right. I, I mean, that's sort of it's sort of the way that the way that he speaks. He kind of talks very slowly, and I feel like it's because he's thinking or he's like deliberate with his words or something. I don't know. There definitely is more to Joey that we're not getting. But you know, I felt that way about Charity with, with on Zach season. I was like, there's more to Charity that we're not getting. So who knows? The only thing I also really wanted to mention from Joey's date. Was that it was she? She was two for two at that point of of like of like a slow jump and then like wrapping her legs around the guy, which is just like not a common move. But on The Bachelor, they make it seem like it's the, it's the main way you begin a date by jumping into someone's arms and wrapping your your legs around them. Uh, obviously, I haven't done that very much in my life, but I am <laughs> six foot two hundred pounds, so it's not that easy. Even if I do it to my husband, I know he's like using all of his energy. <laughs> So it's not my go-to. It is for her, but it is for every like woman who's ever been on The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. So, you know, she's just she's just playing the game. I feel like she was surprised by how good of a time she had with Aaron's family, and that's why it was so complicated. I feel like the Joey and Aaron dates were the ones that were really surprising. She thought Joey was going to go better, and she thought Aaron was going to go worse. And that's why it was so hard to choose. But... To make a decision, yeah. The real winner of this week is every person who loves Xavier because he continues to shine. I mean, taking her to a knitting circle, even though that clearly wasn't his idea, just incredible A-plus stuff. I I really loved it. It was so funny. I love that he's leaning into the knitting. I liked it because I do... It seems like he actually enjoys it. I love that the knitting circle was composed of 70 plus year olds. <laughs> and, and then that one young guy. Yeah. And then I loved how they gave their opinions about things. Um, I loved how he kind of uses it as therapy and he like talked about how it like calms him and all of that. For me, yes, I think in the real world, Xavier is who you want to be with. There's no question. He is... He is great. I like really love him. There, I, I, I don't think they're ready to get engaged. Um, since he said he was not last week, but yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like even him communicating that and being honest and being like, I, like I just don't know. And I thought, well, like maybe he's just like not ready to get married. Period. But then his sister is like, no, he really wants to get married. He's been looking for his partner for a long time. And I'm like, oh, so he's just being rational. Yeah, <laughs> he's just. Uh, he's he's absolutely boyfriend material. And like, that's great. Someone doesn't need to be husband material right away. You grow into it together. Uh, the only thing that I would like your opinion on this, because okay. I don't know, whatever, but is there like a huge difference? Like if you're Xavier and I'm ch- like, if I'm charity, I'd be like, listen, you're who I want to be with. I agree with you. I think it's totally crazy that people are supposed to get married at the end of this or get engaged at the end of this. Let's just get engaged. 
and we can date for like four or five years, do the JoJo route. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work, then we break up. It's like, what's the difference? We're basically just boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. What's the question here? Like, (laughs) I get that an engagement is big, but is it that big of a deal if you break up? I mean, clearly not. Everyone who goes on the show does it. I mean, that's why they should get rid of the engagement. Yeah. There's no reason to keep it in the show at this point. Like, except for having a ring. But I don't think and I don't think anyone who watches these TV shows like really expects that there's going to be a wedding since it never happens. There's like, a, like, I don't know, five out of out of uh, 20 bachelorettes seasons. And I think 28 bachelor seasons, there's like five couples still together. So no one's like no one's watching to hope that marriage happens. So they just really at this point need to get rid of it. It's so incredibly dumb, especially with the season, which is even shorter. I mean, I think I saw this on Bachelor Data or on Reddit, aggregating Bachelor Data, which is run by this woman named Suzanne. But I think they it said it like it was it was 21 days uh, before they went to Fiji. So like, or hometowns, but like ridiculously short. Like you should not get engaged in this period of time. And like, or you, or you know what? Get engaged, but like have it be non-binding. It's just like a stupid term. So yeah, I would just say like off camera, you would have a discussion I mean, even on camera, I don't know why you can't have it on camera, but if you want to have it off camera, have it off camera, whatever. And just be like, you're who I want to be with. I totally get that you want to see if this could actually work and whatever. The only thing I would say that engagement adds is like, maybe you don't give up as easily in an engagement as you do in a regular relationship, which that's all great. Like, let's get engaged and be on the same page that we're going to be engaged for a while until we feel ready to get married. But like, neither one of us wants to get married tomorrow. Yeah, well, like with Love is Blind, because they really do get married, like, <laughs> yeah, that's makes, different. It makes the stakes like so insane, but it makes that show like absolutely crazy. This yeah. is, <laughs> this Shockingly, is really, there's still people married. I know, but also because they actually go through the motions. I mean, the, the amount of time those people spend together is like infinitely more compared to like how much well, time yeah, yeah, Xavier yeah, 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 has yeah. spent with. Also, that they're not competing with other people. Kind of, they are at the beginning, but yeah. Well, like, yeah. Like once they're, once they see each other, it's just those two. <laughs> or it's a wrap in the case of Irina and Zach. Um, yeah. <laughs> by the way, five out of 60 is 12%. Um, it's not something like, horrible odds. I guess. But like, just in terms of the show, I don't think you would boast. But like, hey, sure, like in, in, in all of mankind, like considering the, the conditions. Yeah, it's but like, do you have a 12% of finding your partner on a dating app? I don't know. Oh my God. I feel like it's got to be much lower. <laughs> so it's not horrible odds, which I think Joe and Serena went on a uh, Chicks in the Office. Did you see this? Uh, I know they went on it, but I don't know what they said. Grocery store Joe, they were talking about like the reasons for going on Bachelor in Paradise. And they were both were just saying like, it's not like you're not going thinking there's no chance I can find love. Like there's definitely more of a chance to do it than you like realize. But I don't think either of them were saying that they thought they were like actually gonna like find someone to get married. Paradise makes a lot more sense to me because you've already established like a lot of commonality. That's the problem with dating apps is it's like completely random and it's like hopefully this works out. But with 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 the ones that are a more targeted, like um, whether it's by religion or something else, like I think those tend to have slightly higher um, success rates as a result. But it's Bachelor in Paradise is the same thing. It's like well, these are people who've already chosen to be a part of Bachelor Nation and like think that being on TV and like dating is, a, is something that if not a good idea seems fun. So it's like you've established a baseline approach to life that I think makes it more likely. Um, it's also like more fun. So I, it doesn't surprise me that there's... There, I think there's much more higher success rate from Paradise than there is from the actual I mean, Bachelor it has to be because like multiple people from each season like have yeah, made it. Like Kenny and... Mari. Yeah, they're still together. Ashley and Jared, Tanner and Jade, Joe and Serena. Um, there's really a lot of them. Oh, we're so, missing one. Hannah and Dylan. Dylan, yeah. And even like Piper, well, I guess Piper and Brendan met before, but like they lasted a long time. Although I don't think they ever announced their breakup unless I missed that and people don't care about them. But I They're broken up? I think so. I, I think they are. I have to check in on them. It's been it's been a minute. But I don't know. I I, I think Xavier just seems like a great boyfriend in real life. I, I hope that this helps him get a lot more dates and just like people slide into his DMs because I don't know. People shoot your shot with Xavier. He seems great. What did you think about... We'll, come, we'll get to the other two in a second, but how did you feel? I know this was... I, I think it was true with all of these guys, but none of them 
current like where where the um what the like the Chiron said like none of them live in the place where he told they were they are from, and like Joey is lives in Hawaii but they went to Pennsylvania, Aaron B lives in New Orleans but they went to Houston, Dot lives in yeah. Brooklyn they went to Fresno, and Xavier lives in North Carolina they went to Cleveland. I'm like, what what is the point of not telling us their actual hometown. Like, I don't, I'm not even sure like what I'm looking for here. But when you see Xavier on screen being like, it says his name in like Carborough, North Carolina. And he's like, we're in Cleveland. I'm like, wait, what? I just, I I just start with Cleveland then. It just seems like a weird decision by the show. I feel like it's different for you since you have lived in the same place your entire life. So it is your home. That's not true. Hometown. I... I've lived in California for 11 years okay, and then okay, mercifully okay. moved back to New York. But you live where... 11 years is one third of my life, basically. You live where you grew up. Now. That's correct. So in, uh, you do right now, as of today. As of today, I do too. Um, <laughs> but like if I went on this show, I would take people here, not Dallas. You know what I mean? Like, Right. I'm just saying like... I don't know if they should be telling... I, I guess this is more of a question of like, what are we trying to identify with their bios? Where they currently live and, or like where they're from? Because I just find it confusing. I think it's where they currently live and then where they're from is where they go to visit, which I think it's the right decision. Like we got to know where, they're, where they currently live on a day-to-day. Like I need to know right. when we're like thinking about them as a couple. But like go back and see their hometown. And their family, right? Okay. I don't, for some reason, just the dissonance with Xavier was weird to me. Let's talk about Dotton. His family seemed really delightful. Uh, I liked... I don't know if you watched the very end, but his mom gave Charity like something she said to save for the bedroom. Oh, yeah. Which was pretty funny. Yeah, I saw that. (laughs) Uh, It was pretty sweet that his parents surprised him. I wonder if they had to come back early or if they just entirely changed their plans um, for their trip to Nigeria. But I'm going to read the text that you sent me, Callie, because I thought it was a pretty good point. You texted me thusly. We are wasting everyone's time. Dotton has won. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> she seemed really happy that that went so well. Like happy. super relieved. Yeah. And I feel like with Charity, you can read her. Well, obviously, Joey could. I think you can read what she's feeling <laughs> very well. Like she's not great at hiding how she feels. When Dotton told her he loved her, she was fucking elated elated when when he told her he she was like on cloud nine the whole entire time with his family i'm just like all right uh does anyone else have a chance here (laughs) i know it was like pretty sweet uh joey and aaron are battling for the bottom (gasps) um i know xavier doesn't want to get get engaged it's not it was it i feel like I feel like Xavier needs to find someone else who's like into crafts. Like, I just want you to know I'm sitting here with a stack of origami paper next to me. Sometimes when I'm on on a call, but it's no video, I'll just like do origami. And I'm like, I feel you, Xavier. I don't think he and I are a match, but like in general, I just feel like he needs someone who's got that crafting spirit in their in their brain already. Maybe because I'm not really a crafter. I don't know if that's like the trait. This is this is new that I this is looking, new for me that this I'd is... be looking for. But I just don't think that charity is it for Xavier. Me neither. Me neither. And that's okay. He'll find love. And I know he will. If he goes on Paradise, he will clean up. He's really the Camilla of of Bachelor. Where I'm just like, why? Why are you here, man? (laughs) Her is like actually way more understandable. She had like, she was like traumatized from her job. Yeah, which by the way, no time to date. Yeah. She's proving the point that like, if you're Camilla, you're like 12% on The Bachelor or like 2% on a dating app. And I have to date 900 people to find that 2%. Right. Put me on the back. Yeah, she Put just, me on Love Island. Yeah, her and Jamie still going strong. And I just got to say, he looks incredible these days. Very hot older guy. <laughs> just love it. Do you follow them? <laughs> I check in. I can't... The only person I follow from like recent um, reality TV is Chris. my man, Chris. Yeah. Chris Hughes, yeah. <laughs> um, I follow Tyreek the other And day. I love it. I... um The previews for next week, mm-hmm. I don't... Like, you know, usually you can try to piece together what the drama is. I have no fucking clue. And then I'm like, is there real drama? I don't know. Who do you think shows up? Aaron? I don't know. Can't be Aaron, guy. Brayden? (laughs) Brayden? 
<laughs> yeah, no way. <laughs> I'm like, maybe white, Aaron. White Caleb has been doing a lot of Aaron, a lot of Brayden earring jokes. I don't know. I, just, I don't know. And then like her, when she's like, we're a week away from proposals. I'm like, is that just her like not sure who she's going to pick saying that? Usually you have more of a clue of what the drama is. I Like we saw Gabby and Rachel like crying on the stairs or whatever it was like. We don't even know who it involves. I think her brother shows up again, like earlier than the rest of her family. And I think that's like maybe a fake out. And then mm. I don't know what the other surprises are going to be. I have no idea. I, I really don't know. I Maybe like, I think we must learn significant information about Joey that really rattles her or something like that. Mm. Because otherwise, I don't know what the drama is. And how could it just not be Dotton, as you've been saying? Like... She clearly really likes him. They're, the the drive the drive in date was adorable. I like that they they don't used to do this differently. They used to have like alone time yeah. in the morning, then the family. I like that they they end the day with alone the one on one portion. That's way better. Yeah, we talked about charity a lot and how she like responded to the families. I just wanted to know, Dot and seeing his parents was also very cute. I know. Yeah. I, I think he seems like a really lovely guy. I mean, lovely family. Oh, we never answered your question. Oh, whose family you'd want to join? I, for me, it's definitely Don. Yeah, I like I like the sort of the like the fun aspect of his family. They seemed very fun. They seemed to all love each other. I feel like you could probably like crack jokes in that family. Yeah, if they're making sex jokes on the first day she's come <laughs> yeah. home. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, I love like the spirit of his family. Me too. Me too. And I don't know. They just had a really nice energy. They also seem the most open to her, I think. Like all of the family, other families seemed a little bit wary. And nobody really did the like charity, like, let's see if this is going to work in Dotton's family. They're much more open and just sort of like, okay, let's get to know you. Yeah. So I thought that was nice. But there wasn't any families that I was like, ugh. I don't want to join that family. Usually there's a family that I'm like, no, thank you. I just think Joey's family. I mean, it wasn't awful. And I thought his sibling, I think the sibling relationship seemed nice. But the adult generation being so like wary of like, is he being himself was just weird. And I'm like, what are they talking about? And that was weird. But they weren't that welcoming to her. Yeah, that was weird because we don't we have no idea what they're talking about. But like their actual relationship, like he seems very close to his uncle. His mom was crying. and was just like, I want you to be happy. Like, they all seemed really nice, sweet people. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they did. I just, I don't know. If I were her, I, w- I would most like feel like, oh, we could have a family together oh, with, like, with Dotton's family. Well, she felt that before she met Dotton's family. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think she's so upset? If it's like clearly Dotton, do you think it's just because? Well, we've talked about this. She seems to really like being the Bachelorette, right? Yeah. So I think if any decisions were taken away from her, she wouldn't like it. Like right. if someone That's left, point. if Joey left. Or if Joey revealed something that made her feel like she had to get rid of him, but it wasn't really her decision, something like that. Right. That's true. I just, uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's definitely going to be him. I mean, it's sweet. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, it means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements. So many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. And so they're going to Fiji. I was thinking about why they're going to Fiji. And a lot of shows film there now. So the coming season two Special Forces, which I plan to watch because Tyler Cameron's on it, filmed there. And then Survivor films there like all, all the, time the time now. Yeah. I think Love Island US is in Fiji right now. Mm-hmm. And then they 
went there for The Bachelor. And I think it's kind of interesting. Like Fiji's like carved out a production niche for itself. And I bet it's like really good for the economy there. And they probably already have like production infrastructure for reality TV. So it probably makes it easier for other shows to go. And then there's also like the trade outs, like they make things free or whatever. And I, I gotta say, it looks nice. I'm not crazy about charity being carried in on a chariot, but um, the rest of the <laughs> the coming attraction I thought seemed pretty good. They also have like nine bajillion islands in VG. Yes. How many right. islands is that actually? I want to say it's in the thousands. I'm going to look it up. Like you went last summer, right? Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, it looks really nice. There's 330 islands. So... Yeah. Only 100 are inhabited. Okay, so 100 islands where they can go and film. I think like a lot of productions can be happening at once. They already have it down. It must be cheaper to do it there. Has to be. Yeah. Also, in general, the Fijian, I think that's correct. Correct. The Fijian people are like lovely. So nice. And like the weather is probably good 90% of the time. Right. Did you encounter rain there? Like we had like a sprinkle one day, but it wasn't like Mm. it was like misting. Not like hard rain. Um, we went to the island of Wakaya. Cool. Um, I think it seems like a good a good final spot. Like all of those, like the sort of like Pacific island nations, like when they went to Tahiti seemed really nice. Like obviously I'd like to go to Bora Bora myself. Seems lovely. That's kind of like where the finale should be. It's so far away. When else would you get to go? You know, think sort of like just it just makes sense. But I want to talk about some other potential places they could go. And it's actually time for a special part of today's show brought to you by United Airlines. United is the largest carrier across both the Atlantic and the Pacific. And this summer's schedule includes nearly 25 new routes. In fact, this summer, United will fly to over 100 international destinations, including new service to Dubai and Stockholm, plus nearly two dozen daily flights to London. All this got me thinking, if Fiji wasn't where they're going to do the finale. Although I do think it's a good fit for like this season. I've, I, maybe it's partially because it's summer, but like, I don't know, for like Love Island winter or something like that. If you were choosing between Dubai, Stockholm and London, there's a lot of places where couples could go. And I actually, I haven't been to Dubai, but it is very popular with reality TV stars in general. But I actually think Stockholm is a really good place for them to go because similarly, I don't think you can say there's no, there won't be any rain. But I was there in, in May and there was so much daylight because the sun sets at like 11 p.m. Their last light's like at 11 and it comes back at 3.30. So like you have a long production day. And there's also a lot of beautiful islands right around Stockholm. And I feel like you could have a, like a lot of different activities like both city and then exploring the coast, do things on the water. I think Stockholm would actually be like a, a perfect place for the show to go to. So I don't, I don't know what the trade outs are like, but you know, I just wanted to throw it out there. Something for them to consider for future seasons of The Bachelor and really any reality show looking for a long production day. Wherever you want to go, wherever you want to go for your couple's getaway, make sure you check out United Airlines. Plan your trip today at united.com or on the United app. Remember, flight schedules are subject to change. Callie, while we're talking travel, maybe travel across the pond to discuss a little Love Island, United Kingdom, season 10. Yeah. After last week's debacle of no episodes being available. Oh, yeah. uh, I then went off the grid. So I'm a little bit behind, but there's still so much we need to discuss. We got to talk about Whitney and Ella's fight. We got to talk about the talent show. We got to talk about the Grafties. Have you watched the Grafties? Uh, I've watched most of the Grafties. I'm going to be honest, fell asleep, but I saw most of it. I want to start with Whitney and Ella's fight. The consensus is Whitney was being unreasonable. Uh, I mean... (laughs) I'm not really an Ella fan, but there's actually no evidence that Ella is selfish at all. I can't say one thing that she has done that is selfish. I completely agree with you. I will say that like they both were like, you know, we've been in the villa so long. We had one fight. Like, let's get over it, whatever. No, Whitney, you crossed the line here, bud. And yeah, from what the information that I've gathered, which I've done a lot of Love Island information gathering over the past week, especially when Hulu went down, <laughs> Whitney gets to shower first every single day. Every single day. She takes three hours to get ready. She gets to shower first. Insane. So the one time you don't get to shower first, you call your best friend in the house in front of all the other girls. Not just selfish. The most selfish person you've ever met. (laughs) It's crazy. Also, (laughs) it's really mean. Really mean. (laughs) And... Ella's like, can you give me examples of when I've been selfish? 
The only thing you can come up with is the one time she took a shower before you. <laughs> the one time. The one I'm like, time. The 50th day you've been in there. I would say that makes you selfish, Whitney. And it definitely does. And for you to not let someone else ta- have a shower once without it being a huge deal is crazy. Then she brings up the challenge, which is really the root of the issue. But for some reason, Whitney won't admit that either. And to no. Zach's point, Zach made a great point, which Zach is confusing because I do think he is not dumb. I think he's actually smart, but maybe he just can't communicate well. But whatever. In this, one, I want to say, Ella and Ty are, weren't the only ones that voted you smug, Whitney and Lockin. They weren't the only ones. I think it was like everyone. Yes. Two, Zach was like, yeah, the comment you just made was smug. You just made a smug comment. So that's why I'm voting you for most smug. When someone said that they didn't have sexual chemistry, she was like, that's not what the audience thought. That's smug, Whitney. That's the definition of smug. <laughs> and then Whitney's like, your best friend shouldn't call you smug. I was like, your best friend shouldn't call you fucking selfish outside of a challenge <laughs> also sometimes smug is like could be construed as like almost a compliment it's like your relationship is so good you're smug out of all the things they could have gotten if someone called me and my husband or whatever i don't know love island couple smug i'd be like okay whatever like the only people that had a right to be met mad in that challenge were either michinella or scott and abby because they were getting roasted the entire challenge right no one else got roasted. I mean, how is Mitch still like functional? I don't know. It's been a really rough second half for Mitch. <laughs> but he's also a moron. Yeah, but he doesn't know that he's getting roasted. He thinks he's in on it. I guess. I guess. Do you think... You, we were texting. You said you think that this group in general likes each other. Yes. Do you think they still like, make, like Mitch? I think they like him to an extent. I think that he's doing a little too much. But especially the OGers who have been there with him from forever. Like, I feel like they're like, that's just Mitch. Like, you got to love him. Like, that type of thing. But do I think they think he's annoying? Yes. Do I think do they, do, do I think they think he's doing too much? Yes. But kind of like a thing where, like, we can make fun of him, but y'all can't. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's like, fam- it's like a family. Yeah. Um, but I do think that, and I texted you this last night, it seems like they all like really, really like each other. The way that they were celebrating Lockin's frisbeeing was so sweet. And, and like, and Zach's dunking. Yeah, and Zach's dunking. I wanted to obviously talk to you about that. How high do you think that rim was? Um, I'm not sure. A lot of people were asking, like, was it regulation? There's just no way. No I'm way. I'm saying no way. Eight feet, maybe nine. And a regulation's 10, right? No, I'll say nine. I'll say nine. I'll say nine feet. Yeah, regulation's 10. It would, yeah, I, I think it's probably, it's probably nine. He's six foot, so like he has to be nine. Yeah. He's only six feet. He's, I thought he was more. Oh, I don't know. Six, five, which like, yeah, it has to so be. Yes. Yeah, so then he puts his arms up. Yeah. It's got to be nine feet. Yeah. <laughs> he does not look athletic at all. <laughs> no, but he could shoot. He had good form. Yeah. On his shots. Yeah. So. Like he looked athletic when he was doing it. I guess. Uh, he didn't, he didn't look, no, not like, not like, you know, NBA athletic. Sure. But he didn't look like not coordinated. It, he, he didn't give me the ick. He was or was not. He did not give me the ick. Gotcha. I feel like he's coordinated. I just don't think he can like jump out of the gym. I, I also am curious like what he does. Like what like if he doesn't play basketball anymore, like what is Zach's job? And like how does he fill his time? I saw something on Twitter that was like Love Island's highest earners oh. of the season. Can you guess who number one was? Highest earner of the season. Uh, I'm going to go with Whitney. That is correct. Yes. I think her like her um, wig business is, ex- wig, is successful. Wig line, yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, her wigs have looked pretty good yeah. compared to other uh, islanders that have come on this show. Definitely. Um, and it's and it is blazing hot outside, right? Which makes it even harder for a wig to look good. Yeah. Also, I, pretty good. So did Catherine's. I think that um, her wigs also like. I think her style in general has gotten better as the season's gone on, and she's been there for longer. Definitely looks better today than she did day one. I was really appalled by everyone not clothing up like putting on clothes when their families arrived particularly molly they probably weren't allowed i don't know what are the rules on that i by the way i'm making a master list of like my my questions about how love island works because like one day we will get answers and that's one of them like can you not wear clothes like that seems ridiculous i also it's not like i need to stare at everyone not wearing clothes every single episode like it would be fine i don't think they're allowed inside Mm, okay so 
if they were already outside, the family came and they didn't let them go inside, they can't change. God, there's so much to cover. The family stuff was good too. I really liked how Jess's mom told her that her friends don't like Sammy. That was my favorite family moment. She was like, uh, she was disappointed. <laughs> I mean, the Abby Scott Mitch stuff is just so good. It's like, it's so good because all of them are kind of like inconsequential. So the fact that there's so much drama is just purely entertaining. and I'm not invested in any of their relationships. Um, but what a tough, tough run for Abby. She just looks like such a oh salty, insecure woman. And then they made her wear clown makeup for an entire fucking episode. No, they didn't make her. She chose that. Did she? And... Well, I would okay. If she, okay, I assume that production probably probably was like, oh yeah, if you want to do that, you can be a clown. Obviously, she can't even do fucking balloon animals, so I don't know where that came from. Do they? They must have helped her come up with the talent. Well, well, do they tell them in advance? Like, how much time do they have? Like, how do they go get lock in a frisbee outfit? Like, how do they go get everyone like these outfits to change into? Well, I mean, was that a frisbee outfit or was that just shorts and a t-shirt? But it was like white. He was wearing whites, right? And like Zach was wearing yeah. like a weird high school musical fake red <laughs> <Yeah>. basketball <laughs> outfit. Like they have to go and procure this stuff. They must ask him ahead of time, like, what do you think your talent's going to be? They probably helped people with their talents. Like they helped Abby come up with one. They probably helped Sammy come up with one. But production leading Abby to dress up like a clown, like a jester. <laughs> With the the face makeup is the paint was like crazy. Uh, like all I can say is, the production team has been on their a game this season. Which brings me to the Grafties. The Grafties is a fucking great idea. Great addition. How do they great not addition. have this whole this? season? They've they they've layered in great additions, and this is probably the their their best addition yet. I don't know how they haven't had this. It's such a good idea. From watching season three mm -hmm. to going into this, I was like. God, this is going to make it so much worse because obviously, like, we love season three. It's such a good season. I absolutely love this season. It's been awesome. And for it to be this good, and there's only really one couple that I think is real, maybe two. Who's the second one? Who's the second one that you believe in? I, I think that maybe Zach and Molly are actually, like, into each other. Mm. Yeah, I believe that. I'm not sure if it will work in the real world because Molly is high school musical <laughs> and... Uh, Zach is Top Boy. <laughs> Top Boy is a great show. Yeah. Well, Zach stars in Top Boy and Molly Sides <laughs> stars in High School Musical. I'm not sure how those mix. <laughs> but I think they actually like each other in the villa. The bracelet is like appalling. It's just so hard to, to look at. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how Zach is it like, yeah, I love it. He's like, she's so cute. Yeah. Like he knows. It's, like he... I think he really likes her, but he's very much so like, isn't she just so cute? It's not like, going to work. It's just not. She's, she's like, she's like an alien to him. Molly's relationship with her parents is also just like weird. I don't know. It's just like, are you the Von Trapps or something? It's just, it was weird. Well, her TikToks are just, the fact that her parents are in the TikToks are... It doesn't bode well. Scary. It's scary. Also, I thought that her... um talent show performance. Her and Ella B was just, they both were really awkward. The dancing, like their dancing and stuff. I couldn't. Oh God. Ella B's, I was cringing the entire really rough. time. And I, obviously she can dance and she can put her body in positions that I can't on my best day, but just like very awkward to watch. So, so awkward. And just like, like Ella T and Jess's was fine because it was like fun and funny and not so serious. I mean, Ella B, Ella B is, I'm like, are you trying to like put on a performance to like be, get found by like a talent search? I found, I found all of the dancing uncomfortable and not like in a good way. Like Scott singing was objectively bad, but it was very funny. Oh, uh, but Scott singing was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. I loved it. But I, five even, stars. I found old Ella and what's her name? Jess's dance. Um, like I was just like, they were just trying really hard to be sexy and like, I just felt like they were trying to like be Aaliyah circa, circa 1997. It just wasn't working for me. Okay. And then best of them all. The two best. <laughs> Mitch's roast. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed out loud multiple times to Mitch's, Mitch's roast. Not because his jokes were funny. <laughs> the lack of response and like the, the poor quality of his roast was so, so funny. I was dying. I, I, I'm going to watch it again. In fact... There is crickets in the background. I know. Like, there, that's not fake noise. That's actually crickets. <laughs> and it's given bad bitch. Bad bitch. Bad bitch. I can be a body and a lady. Hey. Don't do 
I said, pays me. Maybe. Can't let no man play me. Couldn't give a toss if you lot hate me. Ty, they should make that in. Big Wit and Ty. That's a great big, rap duo. Big Wit was so good. Big Wit was they awesome. Gotta, they got to make it into a single. Uh, yeah, I mean, like... It's all over TikTok, all over my For You page. People are rapping the lyrics. Oh, That's I, I got to check it. I, I, I love it. It's giving bad bit. Come bay, come feel on my whole body. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, so good. Uh, this whole weekend, I kept saying to... Like, I would be like walking around doing something. If I did something that Seth didn't like, I'd be like, I don't give a toss if you lot hate me. And he was like, what? like stop. <laughs> Stop saying it. It's giving bad bitch. Bad bitch. Bad bitch. I just also I, Yo wit. <laughs> tell him what it's given. Bad bitch. Bad bitch. It's giving bad bitch. Bad bitch. Bad bitch. Bad bitch. <laughs> I really like how Whitney has come to like own some of her annoying stuff. Um, like it's giving. So that's gotten a lot better. I mean, think about it from now to then, like now it's giving is very much part of the show this at the end of the last like two weeks of this three weeks of the yes, season absolutely and i'm totally fine with me it too I, I, me too i'm like okay this is just how they talk this is it's it's because the only thing all... whitney will take accountable for be accountable for <laughs> they're all in on the joke i'll take it so i'll also say even when they were performing like everyone was up and dancing zach spoke into his microphone sign that man now <laughs> Find that guy a record deal now. Like they all just, I, I, I think the friend relationships are just amazing this season. They are really. I wish we just got more of them. Like we're only really seeing it now. Um, one of Mitch's roasts to Ty was like, Ella, you brought someone in to be Ty's best mate. Uzi, when he came out of the villa, said that Ty was his best friend in the villa. That's so funny. Yeah, what else did you learn from Katie and Uzi's interview on the official Love Island podcast? I'm going to listen to it, but I know you've seen um, clips on TikTok. Yes, I listened to the whole thing, actually. Oh, you did? How was uh, it? After you, yeah, it was fine. The beginning is like... That podcast to me is just not my favorite. Yeah. The beginning is just a bunch of like random like opinions about things. And then the end... Kind of like this one. Them. <laughs> it does seem like Katie and Uzi actually like each other, which... That's cool. I don't know. I didn't... Yeah, I wasn't... I didn't foresee that. They all basically said that like Mitch is pretty annoying um, but that they like love him. They did say everyone that has come out of the villa has had like similar opinions on Scott that like he absolutely is playing a game. He does not like Abby. He may have liked Catherine but not as much as he pretended to. He would say thanks to the boys that like like oh I'm just on a all, all inclusive vacay and stuff about Abby which also makes sense why Whitney and Ty keep being like, we know you don't like her. Like, Abby, protect yourself. Da, da, da. Like, Ty keeps saying it to Scott, which, like, I respect him saying it to Scott and not Abby. Whitney keeps saying it to Abby, which obviously she's a woman, so that makes it a little bit different. But she's she won't say who's telling her, but she's like, yeah, he doesn't like you. <laughs> like, she said it, like, 10 times to her. And I'm like, Jesus, just leave it alone. Like, why do you care? But apparently Scott keeps saying things to the boys about how he does not like her. Mm -hmm. That's so tough. that makes a little bit more sense. Katie and Uzi both said that like Ella and Ty are actually obsessed with each other. Mm, that's cute. They were like from the... Yeah. And they've said like from the beginning to the end, like how much more obsessed they've gotten with each other is like very nice. They would like for them to win. And they both said they're not sure how well it will work on the outside with Ty and Ella because Katie was like, Ty is like absolutely a flirt, but like he only wants Ella. Like he's like, she said that Ty is obsessed in love with Ella. It's like really, really sweet. But he's just like, his personality is just like a flirt. And Ella's super overprotective. So she's like, I'm not sure like how that will work. Especially if they don't live in the same in place. Although I guess she has said she'd move to London for... Who moves, yeah. Interesting. I gotta listen to that. But... Oh, and Molly. Yes. Uh, apparently, Katie said, she's like, me and Molly, like I got on. So her being like, I'm so happy Katie's gone. Like was Katie was kind of like, where the fuck did that come from? But she said that they got on on a very like surface level. Like, you can borrow my bathing suit. You can, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that type of thing. Um, but she said in general, Molly did not speak to the girls ever. Unless it was on camera. Well, I think at the Grafties, there's a moment where she just refuses to speak. Like, she just will not... Like, they're like, what do you think, Molly? Or anything to add? And she just says no. And she like shakes her head. It's sort of like, if I'm the producers, like, I, I want Molly gone. Like, they're probably just like so annoyed that she came back. Like what a what a shitty participant in this game. What that is Love Island. You have to talk, Kymer girl. Yeah, yeah. Apparently she didn't talk. She doesn't talk very much. 
But in the unseen bits this week, she definitely showed her personality more. Like it's the most I've seen of her personality. And I'm just, I was wondering after seeing the unseen bits, I'm like, I wonder if her personality has like come out more now that Katie's gone. Right. Cause she just like feels more comfortable. But their, their refusal, she's, like insecure with Katie there. Their refusal to have any conflict on camera is just like, why did you go on the show? Yeah. It's really annoying. She sucks. What a great show. I, I don't love I don't love this season as much just because I don't feel invested in any of the couples, but it, it has been great. Like I think it really picked up once Molly left, like when Katie came essentially, and then post Casa has been very very good because there's been such a shakeup, and I feel bad for Abby, but I also don't like her. I, like I'm enjoying that, as I said, the Abby Scott, LB Mitch drama dynamic. Yeah, even though it's like mean and probably they'll all be traumatized from it. At least Abby will be. What I. What I wish they would have done is saved Katie for Casa mm. and kept Molly. Right. Interesting. And we could have seen if Zach's head would have turned or not. They probably wanted to get rid of Molly. I don't know. I need. I just like need a producer to talk to me. I have so many questions. Someone, just reach out. Yeah. Let's do some, some quick other uh, reality stuff. First of all, we'll be... I'm going to watch Sammy's return to Jersey Shore, which is coming later this week. I'm like, I'm weirdly excited about it. So we'll discuss that next week. But I asked you to watch quarterback and you did. Just give us some oh, yes, give us some thoughts as you know, this did you did you feel yeah, you know, I don't know if you've ever directly said it, but your husband is an NBA player. Did you feel they captured <laughs> the professional athlete life in this show? Well. Yeah, but I think it is so different from basketball. Because of like how physical football is. And for quarterbacks is obviously even like they get hit all the time. Yeah. I just feel like they can't because of like the physicality of it, they can't they have to do like less. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like they have to be more careful. And obviously their season is like significantly shorter. The like the biggest thing to me from watching this is like I don't really understand the like wife part of it. <laughs> it's so different than basketball. Like, is it though? Like, or is it just for the TV show? Because that's what I think is weird. I'm just like, why are the wives on this so much? No, it's like that. It's like that all the time. It is. Like, I feel like it's definitely a thing to be married in football, hmm. especially quarterbacks. Like, I don't know. Except like for Aaron Rodgers. Like, have a spouse. Apparently, they asked Jalen, Jalen Hurts to be on the show and he said no, which I would have been very interested to see him. He has a girlfriend, but not married. So I would like to see what that dynamic. Also, she has like a very serious job. I think she's a she's a lawyer. Lawyer. She's a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing about Jalen Hurts is like, what does he have to gain from being on the show? I just feel like he just got his big contract. Like, what is Patrick Mahomes? Well, I was gonna go there. I think the fact that his wife is on it, like, there's so much bad press about his wife, and there's also like, you know, his his brother has had some inter like some issues as well. And I feel like this is almost... Wait, I haven't seen his brother. Does he come on later? I haven't seen him. I don't think so. But I just think he's trying to change the narrative about his family. Mm. Do you like his wife more from watching the show? No, because I'm just like, this is fake. I'm just like, I, I know we're not getting the not getting a full Brittany Mahomes. And like, that's also like fine. But I do feel like it's very NFL and that it feels like there's an agenda here, which is to like, make us like these three families. Which is like kind of working because at least I like know something about them. I would say I find Kirk Cousins like not just I find him incredibly lame, but kind of an endearing way because I've seen this show. I like Kirk. Yeah, I find I didn't know much about him though, uh-huh. other than like his dancing and stuff, and like I would say like his actual football career. Right. I didn't I didn't know like his family life at all, and I think the show made me like him more. Definitely. I don't dislike Brittany Mahomes. Me neither. Um, and I didn't, I don't like or dislike her more or less from this show, but the whole, I just feel like the quarterbacks are like the one A talent of this. Yeah. And the wives are like one D, like yeah. not even like C or D. They're like, they're in a lot. And obviously we know of like some, everyone knows who Aisha is. Everyone knows who, well, not everyone, but I would say a lot of people know who Savannah is. Lala Anthony. Lala. Uh, there's like a few that people know of. But it's just not the same as it is in football. Yeah. And I'm one, like, no wife goes to every single home and away game. It seems like in football, like, that's a requirement if you get married. And not only do you have to go, you have to go, you have to get bedazzled shirts with their last name on it. Like, it's a whole thing. 
obviously they have way less games, so it's way more doable. But it was just interesting to watch. Like, I'm not ever going to one of Seth's practices. <laughs> <laughs> but like, would you even be allowed? I mean, I just think that like the business of football. Yeah, no, and, not really. And the scale of football is so much bigger. There's, it's funny. There's fewer games, but everything else is bigger. It's like a more popular sport. There's more players. Yeah. The field, like a, a football stadium is way bigger than a basketball arena. Like, it's just yeah. everything about it is bigger. But I also think that like one of the reasons they even make this show is like the role of quarterback is so specific to football. There's no other, yeah. there's no other sport. I guess like pitchers and baseball kind of, but even so like the pitcher is in some ways more of, it's like a defensive player. Whereas like an, quarterback is an offense as an offensive player and like the success of a team is so dependent on that one person and it's just like a, it is a unique role but i think i think the 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 wife part of it is interesting cuz like in the uk wag culture with footballers is so present and like Huge. yeah and like the and the wives are like so famous i love i love wags like i mean you know it's like <laughs> we haven't like really discussed it directly like this before, but it's a huge part of like football culture that I do enjoy. And I like it with all American sports too. It's just weird. I think one of the reasons it's particularly weird, and this came up more with like Marcus Mariota than with the other two, but like they position the wives not only as like their husband's biggest fans, but also kind of like integral to their success, which is maybe, right. maybe true. But like, you know, they have like sound bites from like Brittany Mahomes, like, and um, I forgot the name of Kirk Cousins' wife. I think it's Krista maybe like talking about like their diet and like what they need to be good at their job and like all this stuff. So it's sort of like, it's sort of like the family profession is quarterback. It's not just like the one guy. Yeah, no, it was just interesting. I think that was just interesting to me, obviously, because I live that life in a different sense. Yeah. I don't know. Also, like it is interesting because like football is the most popular sport in the US, mm -hmm. but basketball players are the most popular athletes. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I've I've always thought that was interesting too. Part of it is having to wear the helmets, right? No helmets? Yeah. Yeah. But it's just interesting for like as the most famous, like LeBron has more followers I think than like I don't know, any athlete mm -hmm. prob probably. Um, and it's just, and people know Savannah, but I wouldn't say it's just not this, it's just a different I don't even know how to describe it, but it's just different. I think also part of it was the football. It's a lot harder to like identify individual greatness, like on a play to play basis. And like, yeah, for the great, play, like you can't do everything by yourself. Yeah. And like for the great players, it's really evident. Like even like with Tom Brady with like his, his footwork and also just like the way he treats his body. Like, you know, he was like an early, mm -hmm. Like it's easier to like with the with the football players who become ultra famous, it's for a reason, and you know it's because like you can identify it. But with a with like the vast majority of football players, like I can't really explain why someone's a great center, and I like do consume a lot of football and center in football. Uh, I I completely agree with you. And it, but like it's much easier for me to point out why like a rotation player in the NBA is like so core. Like why you would really want to sign some, yeah. sign like you know a great like set like seventh or eighth bench guy for to be like on your team, w like versus you know how you build your offensive line. And I again I say that as someone who consumes like I'm I know more about basketball and I'm a really much much bigger basketball fan. But like even as a casual fan of sports, like it's a lot harder for me to explain that kind of stuff. And I think I do think that like part of the show and the access is like it it like football players benefit way less from the success of the sport relative to how NBA players benefit from the success of their sport. Like M NFL player careers are shorter. Their salaries are lower. Um, it's just, it's just different. And it's almost like starting with the quarterbacks, I feel like is good for the whole league, but it is just really fascinating because quarterbacks are weird. Um, I just looked up like social media following mm -hmm. and like the difference between a Pat Mahomes and like a Steph, which is obviously not LeBron, like following wise, it's significant difference between Steph and LeBron. It's it's an even more significant difference between Pat and Steph. How many like well, how many followers does Pat have? Five point seven. Wow, that's so low. He's like two time Super Bowl winning quarterback. <laughs> exactly. Like he's probably like the most famous young quarterback. I think Joe I, Burrow. I can't think of anyone else. Yeah, him and Joe Burrow. Let me see how many Joe Burrow has. 
I mean, he's just got so much swagger. Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow has 3.9. That's crazy. Like, just to put that in perspective, Seth has like 2 point something. <laughs> John Morant has more. Trey Young has more. Like, those aren't... They're big people, but, like, Luka Doncic has more. Like, they aren't at the success level of a Patrick Mahomes. Right. Right. It's why... Yeah, it's so, it's so interesting. And, like, also, the whole, like, before a game, we go and give you a kiss. Yeah. Very sweet. But, like, you just saw him a few hours ago. I know. But I'm also just not that type of person. So maybe that's, like, a... <laughs> Personal, personal thing. <laughs> and also, I will say that the basketball wives that I know of in the past who were like that, I feel like are made fun of. Like, remember when Doug Christie and his his ex wife? I don't think they're no longer together. Had oh, like, okay, that that <laughs> extreme situation. <laughs> I mean, Vanessa Vanessa Bryant used to like wait in the tunnel. Yeah, for Kobe post uh, scandal. Yeah, she used to wait in the tunnel for Kobe and give him a kiss after the game. People made fun of her for that. Yeah, and I'm like. Yeah, basketball wives. It's so, and I, it, it, it's like they definitely have a different place. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, um, I mean, obviously, you know, why am I telling you? But it definitely seems like the way basketball wives are like discussed is almost with more like ridicule, but I don't know. It's just very different. Whereas like these like football wives, it's like, yeah, they're, they, they're like there to support their man. It's very high school. It's very like we're still doing Friday night lights, basically. Yeah, it is like high school football, 100%. It's, it's which, fascinating. Which, by the way, I'm not even knocking it at all. I just think it's significantly different. Yeah. It's more so me being like, wow, this is not how it is. <laughs> right, right, right. That's, On the other side of it. This has been fascinating for me, Callie. Thanks for watching the show. Yeah. I, to your point, I don't think it's like great, but it's not bad. No, it's entertaining. And I do feel Supposedly, like... Supposedly, they're supposed to be doing it with basketball next. Oh, cool. Are you going to be on it? <laughs> no. <laughs> not my thing. <laughs> Well, I will definitely watch that. That's awesome. Thank you so much for having this conversation. Thank you to our producer, Ashley Smith. I'll be back. Oh, wait, one more thing. Yeah. Because Love Island is wrapping up and you, if you need like another trashy thing to watch, mm -hmm. this is much trashier than Love Island, but Temptation Island has been great. You know, I was thinking about watching Love Island US, but I realized I stopped paying for Peacock. So I don't know if that's going to happen for me. I started it. It's just hard to watch okay. after UK. Then I it's not even bad. It's just hard to watch because you think of the comparison. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? This reminds me, and I'm going to share this at the beginning of pod on Thursday and next week because I bet no one's still listening. But I just want to say, for the month <laughs> of September, we're going to do a Hannah Brown rewatch. I'm looking forward to it. I feel like I just thought it would be a fun thing to do and an excuse to try to get Tyler Cameron on the podcast so more details on that to come oh lord <laughs> <laughs> thank you all we will be back I'll be back on Thursday Callie and I will be back together next Monday night um, hope you all enjoyed hometown talk to you soon <laughs> <laughs>